The topic of this presentation is an implant surgical procedure for a socket type 2, socket facing buccal bone in an aesthetic area, with emphasis on modified Ivan technique for socket preservation. For more than 15 years, I've been performing some kind of surgical implant procedures in the aesthetic zone on a daily basis. Of course, I did some mistakes, mostly trying out some new techniques. There are many well-functioning surgical implant procedures for the aesthetic zone, but it's better to choose and utilize only some of them. It may help lessen drawbacks of the learning curve for each procedure. Ten years ago, I critically reviewed my cases and put my decision tree on the paper. Nowadays, I firmly hold on to my decision tree using the most convenient clinical protocols, protocols that are proved to be the most effective in my hands, depending on initial situation. In this presentation, I'm going to share with you my guidelines for selection of appropriate surgical protocols for socket missing buccal bone wall, protocols that are proved to be most effective. According to Tarnov's simplified socket classification, it's a type 2 socket. At type 2 socket, facial soft tissue is present, but the buccal plate is partially missing following extraction of the tooth. This is my decision tree for socket type 2. I am going to explain why I prefer socket preservation and delayed implant placement. In my practice, I see cases like this quite often. Young patients who are referred to oral surgery for a tooth extraction in the aesthetic area. Young people suffering for ages from fistulas, pus and swellings, constantly having fear of losing the tooth. Young people with a dental trauma from their childhood followed by a root canal treatment, then root canal retreatment, and then apicectomy, quite often on several occasions. After all these treatments, they come to us very often with root fractures and a buccal bone loss. They are afraid of losing the tooth, especially in the aesthetic area. They refuse filing down the adjacent teeth. Their only fear is the possibility of final aesthetic result failure. Which procedure should be used? Which one is the best for a good aesthetic result? What should be done? We can wait for 4 till 8 weeks and apply the protocol of early implant placement with the GBR. Or we can make some form of augmentation, the preservation of alveola and delay the placing of implants. For the reasons that I'm going to explain later, I am not a big fan of early implant placement with the GBR protocol, especially if the connective tissue graft is not a part of procedure. This is a protocol that I use only if for some reason my favorite procedure is contraindicated and if the patient comes with a tooth already extracted. Immediate dental alveolar restoration procedure is on my to-do list. I have recently seen this procedure on Dental XP and have already applied it in a few cases in premolar area. Socket preservation can be either surgical or prosthetic. Prosthetic socket preservation is classical rich preservation technique for pontic side development. It works very good also for an implant side development. Numerous variations of surgical socket preservation can be classified into three classes. Socket augmentation and coronally advanced flap for primary closure. Socket augmentation and socket sealing with a membrane, mucosa or free connective tissue graft. Or more complex procedure called Ivan procedure. Socket augmentation and coronary advanced flap for primary closure is a procedure I use very often in non-aesthetic, but never in aesthetic zone. 
flap elevation can cause increased resorption of the buccal bone. Coronal advancing of a flap can result in a loss of keratinized gingiva, discrepancy in the high of mucogingival junction with adjacent areas, scars, defective papilla. Early implant placement with GBR, prosthetic socket preservation and socket augmentation with socket sealing are going to be shortly presented as alternatives for some cases. Emphasis is on Ivan technique and its modification. It's a technique that works for socket type 2 and type 3. Six and nine years results of the Buza group shows that early implant placement with simultaneous contour augmentation offers high predictability for successful aesthetic outcomes and good long-term stability of the established facial bone wall. However, I've seen some disadvantages of this procedure. There are reasons why the protocol of early implant placement without conservation of alveola isn't exactly on my favorite to-do list of procedures. First of all, during the period of 4 till 8 weeks after tooth extraction, when buccal bone is missing, soft tissue collapses. In the area of central incisor, soft tissue contracts and shifts away from the center. This is especially evident when frenulum is highly developed. Frenulum also becomes lower with coronal advancing of the flap. Phrenectomy should be made when removing the tooth. According to original procedure, flap is elevated and after placing an implant and performing GBR in sandwich technique procedure, flap is advanced coronally. Sandwich technique means that autogenous bone particles are fed to the surface of the implant, covered with a layer of slowly resorbable bone substitute granules and finally with the membrane. Either vertical and horizontal ridge dimensions are well built up. The second picture shows a situation after implant uncovering procedure. Final result seems to be pleasing. But to tell the truth, final result depends strongly on the play of light and shade. These are two photographs of the same patient taken on the same day. In my experience, at early implant placement with GBR but without connective tissue graft, peri-implant mucosa often lacks a nice texture and color and it's better seen on natural light than under the dental office lamp or camera pictures. This is another case of early implant placement with GBR but also with connective tissue graft. Buccal bone wall is missing. Six weeks after the tooth extraction, the tissue is collapsed. Frenulum is shifted sidewards. This is what I see now, what we all see now. It's difficult to oversee. But back then I was concentrated, easy to guess, on holy papilla, vertical tissue dimension, horizontal volume, bone level on adjacent teeth. Frenulum insertion was not so far coronal and it didn't bother me. The pictures had been taken preoperatively and it took me a few days until I downloaded pictures from camera and saw it. GBI is done in sandwich technique. What I do quite often is putting a 2 mm healing screw underneath the flap. It's an easy way to gain 2 mm of vertical dimension. It's cheap and it doesn't hurt. To enhance the peri-implant soft tissue appearance and to reduce the need for coronal flap displacing, a pediculated connective tissue graft is transposed over augmented area. Few weeks after surgery there is a nice amount of tissue, but I wasn't happy at all. What dominates is discrepancy in the high of mucogingival junction with adjacent areas and displaced frenulum. Here is the final result. <laughs>
To make a nice final picture for presentation, it wasn't necessary to play with light and shade. Cutting the image was enough. This is the whole truth. Patient is happy. She has a low smile line and displays only papilla. But I see only the frenulum. The next case is an early implant placement with GBA and pediculated connective tissue graft without flap displacement. Few years after doing this procedure, I discovered that uh, this procedure has a name, Ivan procedure with immediate implant placement. Ivan stands for interpositional vascularizide augmentation neogenesis. This is a final result. Back to overview. Early implant placement with simultaneously contour augmentation is done. Now we switch to prosthetic socket preservation. Prosthetic socket preservation is known as rich preservation technique for pointic side development. It can be very successfully applied for implant side development. It's classically done with an ovate pointic. Corman introduced an E-shaped pontic design. It's also on my to-do list. I have learned to use prosthetic socket procedure for implant side development from my dear teacher Bob Lamp. Somehow Google refuses to find the literature for prosthetic socket preservation for implant side development. It works like obturator for cystostomy. Prosthetic socket preservation is a procedure that obtains a volume of alveola with a provisional restoration partially placed in it. After atraumatic tooth extraction, patient receives a provisional with a pontic extended to support buccal soft tissue of alveola. Pontic should be shortened in several visits until the rich contour suitable for implant placement is reached. After prosthetic socket preservation, there is usually a residual flattening of the facial bone. It can be easily corrected with a connective tissue graft placed at the time of implant surgery. Patients appreciate fixed provisional bridge. When a deep bite doesn't permit a fixed provisional, a flipper or an occlusal split can be done. Patients gladly accept a prosthetic preservation of alveola and they use it whenever possible. But most of my patients come from far away and for this reason I cannot apply this wonderful, patient-friendly, cheap and harmless technique often. Let's see a nice case. It didn't start nicely. It started with tears. A patient was referred for an apicectomy but the left central incisor had to be extracted. An acute inflammatory process due to vertical root fracture didn't allow surgical socket preservation immediately after tooth extraction. Maryland Bridge was prepared prior to tooth extraction. After flapless, atraumatic tooth extraction, it was confirmed that the complete buccal bone wall had been missing. Provisional is attached. Pontic extends into the socket underneath the buccal gingiva enough to support soft tissue and prevent rich collapse. In three week intervals, pontic is shortened. Three months post extraction, there is a moderate horizontal ridge flattening and atrophy of the distal papilla. A CT scan with implant simulation shows that there is sufficient bone volume to put an implant in prosthetically driven position. Simultaneously to implant insertion, hard tissue augmentation with sandwich technique is performed to increase thickness of buccal bone. Pediculated connective tissue graft is raised and transpositioned to enlarge volume and improve soft tissue aesthetic appearance. Flap design doesn't include a mesial papilla. A distal papilla is elevated to be lined up with the connective tissue graft. This is a patient with a provisional crown. 
Gingiva texture is identical to surrounding tissue. Even the stippling is identical to those of untouched gingiva. This is a final result two years after a definitive prosthetic treatment. Let us focus on surgical socket preservation with a delayed implant placement and begin with socket filling and socket sealing with membrane and mucosa graft. I tested several different techniques. Some of them gave a good result, but not predictable good results. Sometimes the whole process went in the wrong direction. One of tested techniques that in my experience didn't give predictable good results is a socket sealing technique, where socket is filled with slowly resorbable bone substitute and the opening itself is covered by free mucosa graft. Unfortunately, necrosis of free graft happened in 2 out of 10 my cases. Next negative phenomenon which I noticed while performing the flap reopening and implant placement is that when using this technique even 6 till 9 months after the procedure, slow resorbable bone substitute granula are only partially integrated. Alveolar bone doesn't look really welcoming for an implant placement. Patients are also concerned when they find bone particles in their mounds. Tarnock performs socket type 2 by placing the ice cone shaped resorbable membrane in the socket in order to cover buccal dehiscence from the inside. Socket is filled with DBBA and the augmentation material is covered with the membrane. We have all seen that this minimally invasive technique works perfectly and it's a great way of getting the maximum of aesthetics with the help of minimally invasive surgery. But problem may arise if we have just enough tissue to achieve beautiful aesthetic result and we have to lean on prosthodontists and dental technicians who in this case must accomplish perfection in every step striving for perfection in every detail. Numerous implantologists, like me, perform surgeries only. So far I've been working with more than 100 prosthodontics and dental technicians with different skills and knowledge levels. Every mistake leads to a tissue loss and consequently to recession or papilla loss, or both of them. Therefore, for me, a well-developed implant site means a great amount of natural-looking tissue to start with. So, if during healing or prosthetic treatment some of that tissue shrinks, I find it still aesthetically acceptable. I try to avoid incisions, flap elevation and flap advancing. Also, another of my wishes is to have a well vascularized vital implant site with a nice bone volume. I absolutely prefer autogenous material. I started modifying and combining different techniques. Actually, I treat type 2 socket like type 3 as a socket where not only the buccal bone is missing but also where the buccal soft tissue is damaged. I perform a modified Ivan technique with delayed implant placement as described by Fagan and Otos. This is a modification of ton of socket preservation technique. The difference is that the slow resorbable bone substitute particles are placed to cover inner side of the membrane. What com comes next is full filling alveola with the particles of the autogenous bone. Slow resorbable granulas are for the long-term stability of the facial bone wall. Implant bed itself is going to be surrounded by vital autogenous bone. Some details from a surgery. Socket is filled with autogenous bone particles. A layer of slow resorbable bone substitute is placed buccal to autogenous bone.
Building the soft tissue simultaneously usually comes as a difficult task due to poor blood flow over a GBR membrane. To overcome this problem, uh, vascularized interpositional periosteal connective tissue flap should be used. VAPCT flap was introduced by SCLA as anteriorly based pediculated tissue of palatal submucosa that is composed of periosteum and connective tissue. Its own blood supply allows graft survival on the poor vascularized recipient site like membrane. A tunnel is prepared buccally. Connective tissue graft is placed into the tunnel. It allows soft tissue grafting and enhances blood supply of the graft. VIPCT flap covers the socket site and enhances soft tissue volume and appearance. One incision technique for connective tissue harvesting leaves just a cut to be seen. Let us see animation of this procedure. There is a buccal bone defect. The tunnel is prepared. Harvesting of a pediculated connective tissue graft. It should be a longer graft to fulfill the whole buccal tunnel. It's taken in one incision technique. This technique provides a very nice, painless healing of the donor site. Connective tissue graft is shaped not to be rotated but overlapped over the socket opening. A flap rotation might compromise a blood supply. Sutures are prepared in advance to avoid later manipulation over augmented socket. An ice cone shaped collagen membrane is placed in the socket in order to cover the buccal dehiscence from the inside. Slow resorbable bone substitute particles are placed to cover inner side of the membrane. What comes next is fulfilling alveola with the particles of the autogenous bone. Finally, the round end of the membrane switches across the augmentation material to seal the socket opening. A pediculated connective tissue graft is inserted into the tunnel and sutured. Let's see a case. Left lateral incisor is assigned for extraction due to root resorption 10 years after frontal teeth trauma. After atraumatic tooth extraction and thorough debridement, it's confirmed that the buccal socket wall is missing completely. A pediculated connective tissue graft is gained in one incision technique. To avoid a later manipulation and possible dislocation of socket graft material during suturing, a loose suture is prepared in advance. Autogenous bone chips are harvested with a bone scraper from Lina Obliqua. Membrane is contoured into an ice cream cone shape. The narrow part of the trimmed membrane is placed into the socket and should be wide enough to extend laterally to cover the buccal wall defect. The wider part of the membrane is placed to cover the opening of the socket where the graft had been previously placed. Socket is grafted as described before. In the next step, 
The pediculated connective tissue graft is fixed underneath buccal gingiva and the palatal wound is closed with compressive sutures. Four months later, an implant is placed in a flapless procedure allowing a semi-submerged healing. This is a final result, one year after prosthetic treatment. Papilla are present. Level, contour, color and texture of a scar-free peri-implant soft tissue are matching the surrounding tissue. These are pictures of some patients. All of them are young adults that had suffered a frontal teeth trauma in their childhood. On the left there is an initial situation. In the middle is detail from the surgery. On the right is a final result. And some more cases. This is a picture of a beautiful girl from the beginning of this presentation, a girl whose eyes filled with sorrow are on all templates of this presentation. The right lateral incisor is a hopeless due to vertical root fracture. There is a scar visible after apicotomy that was performed few years ago. A periodontal probe demonstrates the buccal bone loss. Harvesting of pediculated connective tissue graft, ice cone shaped membrane is placed, socket is filled with autogenous bone particles, a layer of slow resorbable bone substitute is placed buccal to autogenous bone, socket opening is covered with a membrane. Connective tissue graft is placed on the top. Connective tissue graft is drawn through the tunnel and sutured. Palatal wound is sutured too. Four months later, an implant is placed in flapless procedure. The right image shows the result after prosthetic treatment was finished. Four years after the prosthetic treatment, there is no change. Peri-implant soft tissue is stable. A close view. And a happy patient. Predictability of the peri-implant aesthetic outcome may ultimately be determined by the patient's own anatomy. If all other parameters, like bone level on adjacent teeth, are satisfying, a missing buccal bone wall shouldn't be a reason for not achieving a nice aesthetic outcome. It's crucial to select an optimal procedure depending on initial situation. It's advisable to have your own decision tree with a few procedures that work the best in your hands and to master them.